Hello and welcome to this video. I have a real treat for you today. I have a 20 minute tutorial which is part of an eight part series on Chopin's heroic polonaise that I recently made for the well-rounded pianist. The well-rounded pianist is my own teaching tutorial site. There are more videos on the well-rounded pianist than there are on the Box Scholar YouTube channel. And I upload about 10 times more videos on the well-rounded pianist than I do on YouTube. It's a booming place. Things are happening there. People are learning piano. Uh, students of all ages are learning piano there from me. I upload new content every week. Uh, it, I love the site. I spend a lot of time on it. Uh, in fact, I spend much more time on the well-rounded pianist than I do on YouTube. So if you want to learn piano from me, uh, I have been teaching piano now for over 35 years. Go over to the Well-Rounded Pianist and sign up for one of our three current plans that we have over there. I'd love to see you there. I'd love to teach you. I love teaching piano to students of all ages and all levels, especially beginners and intermediate level pianists. I specialize in less advanced pianists. I do not teach child prodigies. I do not teach concert pianists. When I explain things, I explain things very clearly and precisely. I always demonstrate slowly. There are too many teachers on YouTube who assume everyone is very advanced and rush through everything and try to show off and that, that just doesn't really do the, the student any, any good because everything goes by so quickly. So without any further ado, here is part seven from my eight part series on Chopin's Heroic Polonaise. I want to see you over at the Well-Rounded Pianist. I want to be your personal professor until we meet again. Hello and welcome. This is video seven of eight of uh, Chopin's Heroic Polonaise. In this section, we are going to cover the D and the E sections. The D section begins, uh, or what I call the D section, begins here, the third measure up on page 56. That is the publisher's page 56. I didn't count the, number, the page for us. That's the third measure over D. And E begins here. So we have uh, the, the middle section before D, the C section, is the It's the famous part with the ostinato in the left hand and the key of E major. Then in this page, is an E flat major. And then we start the D section here. Chopin marks a fortissimo here with a crescendo. If you listen to most performers, they do the opposite. They go, they usually do down in volume, make it a little more cantabile. I would not do that. That's not what Chopin marked. <clears throat> so I would uh, keep it very strong with that very march-like polonaise rhythm. Bum, ba, ba, bum, ba, ba, bum. And keep it very strong. Remember, this is a military march. So keep it strong there. And I would, for pedaling, I would suggest I would suggest a down and an up. Down, up, down. You could do that, or you could, if you want, you could do that 
also. That's what McCooley writes here. So experiment with your pedaling. See what you'd like to do. Um, McCooley's is a little fuller. The first way is a little thinner, but it's more rhythmically precise. So now we're in the D section. Keep it strong and loud. out, bring out the top melody here with your right hand. You have to have a strong fourth and fifth finger to do that, or whatever finger you're using there on the top. Another thing that pianists often do uh, if, if you haven't seen my video on uh, cookie cutter pianists that I posted on YouTube, you might want to watch that. I explain how performers just copy everybody for no reason. And, and Chopin didn't mark this, but most pianists, those so-called cookie cutter pianists who just copy everybody without doing what Chopin wrote, they do this. come down in volume there. I would go up in volume. That's it. The, the bass goes down, the soprano goes up. That's the logical thing to do. I mean, Chopin doesn't mark a crescendo there, but this is the musically logical thing to do here. Keep it strong. strong. A lot of pianists also kind of sort of come down and soften it up. I, I, I wouldn't do that. Well, I don't know. You might, want to, you might want to, but you also might want to experiment with not doing it. Just because everyone does that doesn't mean you have to do that also. So one thing good about keeping it strong there when you come to the piano here that the piano is more noticeable when you keep the other the former phrase strong so we're strong and loud here soft and it brings the soft out there. So experiment with that, but don't fall into the trap of just doing it the way everyone does it, because everyone does it that way. You need to experiment with what you like and what seems like the more musically logical thing to do here. Now in the E section, I would suggest getting the left hand really good. The left hand is, is usually sort of ignored here, but it's really important. And what Chopin has, he usually has a strong bass note. And the harmony is on the on the thirds in the middle. So those harmonies, those thirds, you want to connect those with paddle. It's almost as if they're quarter notes. So don't play. But play. With pedal. So you're going to pedal on those thirds. <coughs> Strong bass note. Light and airy, with an accent, paddle, paddle. Strong bass note. Bring the thirds out here. Thank you. 
chord. Tantra chord, four notes. He's he's going. It sounds almost Spanish in a way, like what Scarlatti would do or what Spanish composers would do using that descending tetra chord. Away. He says smorzando here. And the fourth line down, second measure over, smorzando, sort of a dying away. And so now I'll address these last few measures here in a few minutes, but I want to talk now about the right hand of the E section. I would suggest practicing this with no pedal with the right hand just so you can work on your legato and your cleanliness of it with a pretty strict rhythm. You don't have to have much rubato here at all, but if you do use rubato in the heroic polonaise, this is the place to do it, in my opinion. This, this you can get away with more rubato here in the soft and lyrical section than you can in the other sections successfully. So now I'm going to put hands together here at E. So we have, we're, we're ending this strong. And soft. Be very exact with those rhythms and, and try to bring those out. Nice strong bass tone there. Accent there. crescendo through that measure. Sorry. Now we're a little, sort of, maybe at a, a dynamic level, a little above piano now. So maybe mezzo piano, somewhere around there. Nice strong bass tone there. Hold the pedal down for it. Accent again in the left hand. So yeah. You have that, bring that out with the pedal. Nice strong bass tone. soft and airy in life. Chopin double stems these notes, so you want to make bring that out. You pedal there. So bring these. Bring out those double stemmed notes. That's 
That's Chopin's way of indicating just a molto legato there. And then we have the return of the A section here. Now, I want to talk about these last four measures here. The dying away, he says smorzando, die away. He's getting lower and lower. 99% of the pianists I've heard play this crescendo here. Chopin doesn't mark a crescendo, and he marks smorzando earlier. So that doesn't mean crescendo. If you've seen my video on the uh, cookie cutter pianist, this is another uh, trait of cookie cutter pianists. They just copy everybody because everybody does something. Uh, this is a place where it's very clear and it's musically speaking, it's logically the thing to do is not to get louder, it's to die away. He's getting lower and he's dying away. Then in the next page, and he hits us with a fortissimo, subito fortissimo. He doesn't write subito, but he says fortissimo there. I would suggest just doing what he wrote. Don't do what everybody does. Everyone does this. So, pretty much 99% of pianists I've heard play this do it that way. I would suggest doing really what Chopin wrote. Chopin wrote this, smorzando. And then you just hit him right in the, hit him right in the face with the theme. I think it's better that way, and it's what Chopin probably wanted because he wrote it that way. If he wanted a crescendo, he would have written a crescendo there. So die away, get very soft, then hit them with the fortissimo at the same speed. It doesn't even need to, to speed up or slow down. So um, now I'm going to play the D and the E sections with a metronome at 48 beats per minute. This is a little faster than the half speed video that I have for you, a super slow video that you can view, but it's somewhere in between. So this is a moderately slow speed, but not, it's still faster than half speed. So we're coming off the, uh, the C section here. stop it there and just say something. I, I notice also I didn't address this, the, the, the accents. There's accents here. Mikuli marks accent. I, I honestly don't know if they're Chopin's or not, but Mikuli was a student of Chopin. He was Chopin's most esteemed pupil. There are accents here. Bum, 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 bum. So I would bring those out. Don't get, don't get soft and mushy with them, as most pianists do, but keep them strong. So we have...
fortissimo right there. You hit him right in the face with that fortissimo, so it's a surprise. That's what I would do, and that's what Chopin wrote. So, um, this is a beautiful two pages, really beautiful two pages, and it requires a lot of control. Personally, I don't play this any slower than the other sections. Chopin did not mark Menomoso here. Uh, he didn't write anything, so that is to be assumed that the original tempo will remain through this, as I talk about in my in my uh, cookie cutter video on Chopin's Polonaise. So, I wish you all the success in practicing this, and stay tuned for the eighth and final video in the series on Chopin's Polonaise for the well-rounded pianist.